Hello everyone, today we are at California Adventure. It's actually my birthday today and we are gonna be eating all of the Asian foods that they offer. They're actually doing their Lunar New Year celebration right now. So they have lots of Asian food for us to try. I'm super excited for some of the items, including boba. So yeah, let's head inside. Let's go. Okay, so we just stopped by two of the Lunar New Year booths, Bamboo Blessings and Wrapped with Love. By the way, they're having these sip and savor passes. It's very similar to how they have it for the holiday festival and I believe food and wine, they have this too. So basically you buy this for $45 and if you have a magic key, it's $42, I believe, but I'm not a magic key holder. So I paid 45 and divided by six tabs, each tab costs 750. So make sure you don't use a tab on anything that costs less than 750. Otherwise you're not getting your money's worth. So first step, is this Mickey hot dog bun. This is from Bamboo Blessings. And I actually remember when I came here four years ago, they actually had this and I was so surprised and happy to see that they had a hot dog bun because that's one of my favorite items to get at Asian bakeries. And just to see it in a Mickey shape and it's like at Disneyland, it just makes it that much more magical. Hmm. The bun is very light and fluffy. It definitely is on the dry side, but I guess it depends on what kind of bite you get because if you get more of the hot dog, then it's juicier. The savoriness of the hot dog balances out the bun. And also what I thought was interesting is that they actually serve it to you with mustard and ketchup. And I've never had any condiment on my Asian hot dog bun before. So I kind of want to try it. I am a ketchup girly, so I'm going to just put some ketchup. I'm not huge on mustard, but let's add some ketchup. It's actually so interesting because I'm used to eating it without the ketchup, but it's also a familiar taste with the ketchup because I also am used to eating like American hot dogs with ketchup. So it's very interesting. I kind of like it actually. I might start putting some ketchup on my Asian hot dog buns. Next up also from Bamboo Blessings is this Mickey purple sweet potato macaron. It's so cute. It even has a little streak of gold for the red and gold Lunar New Year colors. And that purple sweet potato filling, it actually looks very potato-y. It has like that kind of texture. Mm. 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 This is actually really good. I like the crisp on the macaron shell and the inside has a little chew and the filling does have that kind of sweet potato grainy texture and it has a nice flavor as well. I think the filling itself is not too sweet, but the macaron definitely on the sweeter side. That creme fraiche filling, it's giving like a cheesecake vibe. It makes it really creamy. Next up, we have these pork and shrimp wontons from Wrapped with Love. And before we dig in, I have a little bone to pick because this is three tiny wontons. And if you don't get the sip and savor pass, it's $8.75 for this. Even with the Sip and Saver Pass, makes it $7.50, right? But that's still a lot for three little wontons. But anyway, these come with a black garlic sauce. So let's pour it all over those wontons. Hmm, shockingly, not bad. That sauce is kind of vinegary. It does have like a garlicky flavor and a soy saucy flavor too. The wonton wrapper has like a little chew to it and that meaty filling is also very nice. The filling actually reminds me a lot of like a sumai and the wonton skin also reminds me of sumai. So this is kind of like a sumai wonton. <laughs> Are you shazamming the music yeah, right now? <laughs> Forbidden City, 12 girls band, in case you guys are interested in what's playing right now. Then also from Wrapped With Love, we got these bok choy and mushroom dumplings. These also come with a black garlic sauce, so it's probably the same sauce. Wow, look at how great those look. Let's give it a try. Mm. Wow, it has a really strong bok choy flavor. You definitely get the mushrooms too, but the bok choy is more prominent. It pairs really well with that black garlic sauce. You get the vinegariness, you get the savoriness from the soy sauce and the garlic. The dumpling wrapper itself, it actually reminds me a lot of like ravioli. <laughs> ah. 
Immediately it tastes like ravioli. Wrapper. It's like a bok choy ravioli. I wish the wrapper was a little more like dumpling like. Dumpling like. Mm -hmm. I like the first one more. Okay. Yeah. I liked it. I like both of them. I just don't like the price. <laughs> to beat you in your dream <laughs> <laughs> all right let's see Woo <laughs> Bird. how does it feel to lose <laughs> and grab some more food to try. First step, we have this green tea horchata from the cappuccino cart. And it looks like on top, they added some popping boba. I'm not quite sure what the flavor of the popping boba is. And of course, we're gonna use our Feed Mei Mei glass boba straw. Link will be in the description. As always, it is back in stock. So definitely go check it out. Let's give this a good mix. Whoa, that is so interesting. So first off, the drink part, it definitely has both elements. You taste the green tea, you taste the horchata. It has that like cinnamony rice flavor coming through. It actually pairs together quite well. But then when you get those popping boba, first of all, I don't think I'll ever get really, really used to the texture of popping boba because whenever it pops, I just get surprised, you know? But this popping boba, it actually has like a yogurty flavor to it. it. Has this tartness to it. And it just kind of changes the whole drink, I feel like. It almost tastes like Yakult popping boba. Very interesting. Bird, you have to try this. Whoa. Whoa. The popping boba tastes like animals. Like yogurt. There's something about the texture that I'm not crazy about. I think it's like the sandiness of it. Oh yeah, there is a little sandiness. Like a little yeah. grainy. I mean like it's fine and we'll finish it, but I'm not sure if I would get it again. So next up we have this red spice fried chicken bites. And these are fried chicken chicharrones in spicy red chili sauce. These look very similar to like Korean fried chicken bites. It's actually super flavorful. Like it definitely has a kick to it. I'm impressed because a lot of times when I get spicy stuff, it's not that spicy. This has a kick to it for sure. And I really like the flavor that they use to season this. However, the breading is kind of on the soggy side. There wasn't really a crisp. We did wait a little bit to eat it, but we didn't wait that long. So I'm not sure how crispy it would have been if we had eaten it right away because it feels like it's been soggy for a little while. And then the chicken itself, it definitely is on the dry side. But I do have to say, I really like the flavor. Next up, we have this gochujang alote. Steamed corn on the cob, rolled in gochujang aioli and kotiha cheese, drizzled with spicy gochujang sauce. The corn is nice and juicy. It has a crunch to it. The cheese really adds that creaminess that balances out the spiciness of the gochujang. I actually like it. I mean, it's not like my go-to go-to, but I would definitely order it again. And then last but not least, we got this Dalgona coffee bunch cake. It's filled with sweet milk and topped with Dalgona foam. Oh, wow. You can see that sweet milk inside. Mm. Whoa. That Dalgona coffee is super strong. Definitely on the bitter side. I need more of that sweet milk filling to balance out the bitterness of the Dalgona. The bun cake itself, it is very dense. Kind of like the texture of like banana bread. You know how it's like kind of denser? Like it's definitely denser than other cakes that I'm used to. And the flavor of the cake itself is not bad. It's just that Dalgona foam topping is very bitter. That is a hell of bitter. <laughs> That's like the only thing you can taste. You're bitter about how bitter it is. I'm bitter about how bitter it is. Mm. 
Okay, so we just stopped by Longevity Noodle Co. And we picked up their garlic noodles. These are long noodles tossed in a zesty garlic butter with Parmesan. I personally am a sucker for garlic noodles. I love garlic, I love noodles, I love cheese. So I feel like there's no way you can go wrong with this. Mmm, this is some serious comfort food. Immediately you get hit with that strong garlic butter flavor, and then you get the creaminess from the Parmesan, and there's some pepper on it as well, which adds a little pepperiness. <laughs> it's so simple, but it's so good. Next up, we have the spicy pork dandan dan noodles. Pan fried noodles with ground pork and spicy tried chili sauce tossed in crushed peanuts. It's very interesting to see dandan dan noodles using basically like spaghetti <laughs> as the noodle. Hmm. It is flavorful. It definitely does have a spicy kick to it. And it does taste like it has like Asian flavors, you know? It actually does have that kind of like numbing spice, like a little peppercorny kind of spiciness to it. But I don't know. I'm not crazy about it, actually. It's a bit dry. That's true. I don't know if I get it again, but I definitely get those garlic noodles again. Same. Next, we have this raspberry oat milk tea. Ceylon tea, raspberry and demerara syrup and oat milk garnished with skewered raspberries. Oh, wow. Really strong raspberry flavor. And it goes really well with the Ceylon tea flavor as well. And you get the little like thickness of the oat milk too. That's pretty good. Yeah, it tastes pretty good, right? Like, I don't know if I would consider it like a milk tea, no. but it tastes good. Like when I drink it, it doesn't have the typical flavors of a milk tea, but it does taste good. It's like refreshing, but kind of creamy from the oat milk at the same time. Definitely like it better than the green tea horchata. They're all waiting for him. Do you remember when we took pictures with Pluto a few years ago? Yeah. You I'll insert the photos here. <laughs> there you go. Thank you. Okay, so we just got this tiger milk tea with boba bam brown sugar boba. When we first got it, it had these really nice tiger brown sugar stripes on the cup. I'm very confused. <laughs> Let me tell you why I'm confused. Last time we came was for the holiday festival and we had their holiday Thai milk tea with boba. And that boba was the perfect texture. I was so impressed. But what's going on here? The boba is mushy. Like it is a little bit chewy, but it's mostly mushy and soft. Like almost to the point where it's like kind of disintegrating in your mouth. It's just not good. I'm very confused. I was like so excited to try this because the holiday one was so good. Why is the Lunar New Year one no good? It makes me sad. The milk tea drink also is not very good. You don't get a strong tea flavor. It's not creamy enough. Like you can tell it looks watery. It doesn't have that nice cream that milk tea usually has and overall a very big disappointment yeah the boba is kind of mushy today it's kind of chewy but like you chew it like twice and then it just becomes mush so would you get it again no and if it's not good enough for bird it's not good enough for you <laughs> that's true because bird has very low standards when it comes to boba yep <laughs> You know, the holiday one, it was from Lucky Fortune Cookery, and I know that they actually have a black milk tea with boba, so I feel like we're gonna have to go try it and see if that one's good, and maybe only Lucky Fortune Cookery can make the boba good, and the Paradise Grill cannot make it good, I don't know. But I think we're gonna have to do a side-by-side -side comparison, and I'm hoping that the black milk tea will be better, so let's go try that. We are at the Lucky Fortune Cookery and we have our black milk tea. So this comes with brown sugar boba and sea salt cream. And the one during the holidays was basically the exact same thing. It had the brown sugar boba and the sea salt cream, but instead of black milk tea, it was Thai tea. So let's go ahead and mix this up. Also, when I was waiting in line for this, I noticed that they have a lot of different dishes here, like ramen, teriyaki chicken, banh mi, and I haven't tried any of those before at Disneyland. I would try them today, but we're focusing more on the Lunar New Year food, but we are actually coming back to Disney really soon. So let me know if you guys wanna see that in the next Disney video. Mm. 
Mm. Okay, so immediately, boba texture is way better. It is still not quite as good as the one that we had in the holiday Thai tea drink. I don't know why, it's so interesting. The boba texture is okay, like it's chewy, it's bouncy, it's soft enough. It does have a layer of mushiness on the outside and the Thai tea one didn't have that at all. So that's really interesting. And I also find it very interesting that this boba texture is way better than the tiger milk tea boba texture because they probably use the same boba, right? So very interesting. As far as the drink goes, it's much creamier than the tiger milk tea, which I like. It does have a tea flavor, although it could be stronger. Also, I'm surprised, but it's not that sweet. The Thai tea one that we had during the holiday was hella, hella, hella sweet. This one is not that sweet, surprisingly. I mean, is it a good milk tea? I wouldn't really say so. Boba texture, it's okay, it's passable. The tiger milk tea, milk tea was bad, and the boba was not passable at all. This is like the equivalent of boba that you might get at like Quickly's, but a bad Quickly's, not a good Quickly's. Okay. Take that how you will. Okay. <laughs> You're still drinking it though. So it's good enough for bird, this one. It's good enough for bird. Okay. Just stopped by the Lucky Eight Lantern and we have this quesabiria egg roll. It's filled with cheese, beef birria, and a side of guajillo pepper consomme. This one egg roll is $9. <laughs> Just saying. It does look nice and crispy on the outside. You can see that bubbling skin. I'm gonna give it a dip. It definitely has some nice flavor from the consomme. It's just that the birria is definitely on the dry side. I mean, it does help to have this little side of consomme to, you know, moisten it back up. The egg roll also, it looks nice and crispy, but it got kind of soggy. So it's actually not that crispy. There's like a little bit of creaminess from the cheese, but there's actually not that much cheese in here. At least not that I can see or taste. But this little side of consomme is honestly the saving grace of this egg roll. If you want to satisfy your quesabiria fix, I would recommend getting the quesabiria tacos at Cocina Cucamonga. I think that's what it's called. Those are really good. And also, yesterday we were at Disneyland and we had a quesabiria toasted cheese. That was amazing. So if you haven't checked out that video yet, I'll link it in the cards and in the description box. Definitely go watch it because you don't want to miss some of those foods. They were so good. Next up, we have this barbecue pork tasu bao. It comes with pickle, red onion, and jalapeno. I'm actually pleasantly surprised. By the look of it, I didn't expect much, but actually the jalapeno, the pickled onion, and the cilantro on top, it helps bring so much flavor out. Wow, I love the combination of those flavors. The bao does have some softness and fluffiness to it. It could be softer and fluffier. The pork, it does have some barbecue pork flavor, but it could be stronger, and the pork is a little bit on the dry side as well. But honestly, the cilantro, jalapeno, and pickled onion saves this. Next, we have this pepperoni pizza bao bun served with marinara. I'm not quite sure what that filling is. I think it's some sort of like tomato and pepperoni and onion filling. Very interesting. I do like the crispy mozzarella on the top. The bun itself is a little bit on the dry side, but you just dip it in that marinara sauce and it helps moisten it back up. Overall, it's just okay. I don't think I would get it again. And out of the three, the one that I might get again is the tasu bao, but only because of the jalapeno, cilantro, and pickled yeah. onion. All right, this feels good. You and I think we got something special oh, And I don't need to try any harder It just better It just Oh, 
this mission in the one. It's really them in the flesh. They're so cute. Oh my God. Okay, so we just got another round of food. We are at the Paradise Garden Grill and they had quite a lot of selection. So first up, we're gonna try this kimchi bokumbap. I hope I'm saying that correctly. It's a kimchi, potato, carrot, and onion fried rice with egg and Korean chili paste topped with crispy, sweet, and sour tofu and black sesame seeds. Whoa, the ginger flavor is really strong. If you guys have been around for a while, you might know that ginger is my most number one hated food of all time. So I'm not quite sure if I can give a fair review for this because I personally, just my taste buds, ever since I was a child, I've hated ginger and I've never gotten used to the flavor of it. Safe to say, this is not my favorite thing. It's a lot of ginger. Even for you? Yeah, even, it's, it's a lot of ginger. Bird doesn't hate ginger like me and even he thinks it's like too much ginger. It's too much ginger. We have the dak bulgogi. It's a Korean barbecue chicken served served with rice and kimchi. This is actually their sip and savor portion. They have a regular portion, which is much bigger than this. Mmm, this one I like. The chicken, I think it's chicken thigh, so it's nice and juicy. It actually has this nice like grilled flavor to it. Basically like what you would get at Korean barbecue. The acid and the spice from the kimchi cuts through the richness of the chicken. It also adds this nice crunch, which I love. And of course you need that white rice to balance everything out. This one I would get again, for sure. Also from Paradise Garden Grill, we grabbed this honeydew milk tea parfait. It's layers of lemon cake, brown sugar gel, and honeydew milk tea mousse. All right, let's get a bite with everything in in there. Ooh. We got some of the cake, got some of the brown sugar gel, and that honeydew milk tea mousse. Whoa, the honeydew milk tea mousse, it does taste like honeydew milk tea. Honeydew milk tea is usually made with like honeydew powder, so it definitely has that flavor. I'm not mad at it. I don't really taste the brown sugar flavor, but it does kind of remind me of having like a jelly, like a grass jelly or something in my milk tea. And that lemon cake on the bottom is nice too. Everything in this cup works really well together. I like it. I would recommend this. I don't really taste the, uh, the lemon though. Yeah, I, I kind of taste it subtly. I do like the jelly. It's kind of fun to eat overall. I think this is worth getting. Bird approves. Bird approves. Right next door to Paradise Garden Grill, there's this milk tea taro cheesecake from Boardwalk Pizza and Pasta. Whoa, very interesting. It does have a tea flavor and a bit of taro flavor and a cheesecake flavor. So I guess it's exactly how it sounds. <laughs> it is a pretty rich cheesecake though. I don't know if I can finish this by myself. Don't worry, I'm here. Last but not least, we have this baked coconut almond niangal. It's a baked sticky rice cake topped with coconut and almond. All right, let's try to get a spoonful. <laughs> it's really hard to get a spoon. I think it's probably because it's like sticky and kind of like mochi texture. All right, there we go. Huh, interesting. The texture looks very cake-like, but niangao doesn't usually look cake-like. I mean, there are different types of niangao, but I've never had niangao like this before. Hmm, well, it's actually not bad. I honestly have pretty low expectations for this, but it's not bad. Like, of course it's not the best dessert ever, but I'm pleasantly surprised. It does have a bit of that chewy, sticky rice cake texture that you're supposed to have from Niangao, but it is more cakey than other Niangaos that I've had in the past. It does have a nice almond and coconut flavor as well. I thought this was gonna be a flop. I can't believe I'm eating Niangao at Disneyland. <laughs> like, that's wild. However, if you guys are looking for a good Niangao recipe, I posted one on YouTube Shorts, so I'll link that in the cards and in the description box. I have to say that one is better. It's different, but it's much better. And it's also very easy to make too. And that's it for eating all the Asian foods at Disneyland. Comment below which one was your favorite or which one you would want to try. And yeah, thanks for spending my birthday with me and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye!